gotta make sure I get everything. Um, if they did, I'm not starting it because I just want to make sure that I have. I invited uh, Neil, who was my speechwriter. We <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I met Larry. I mean, I knew him, but I met him yesterday at, at, at the church um, as part of a uh, pulpit exchange between the synagogue and the church in Marblehead, and he was there. And um, he's the videotape. I mean, yeah, yeah it's, well, it's video, but it's um, digital video. And Diane is the, uh, <laughs> she's here, and she's taking a few pictures of her newspaper. The Secret anyway, Service people are outside. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, um, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, and distinguished guests and members, and I just, about and my enthusiasm in, in this organization, Toast, uh, Toastmasters, and okay, now we'll stop. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you. Uh, this being my icebreaker speech, my very first speech at Toastmasters, prompts me to think that perhaps the first icebreaker of all occurred at the time of Exodus and the parting of the Red Sea. We all know the story. How uh, the children of Israel were waiting for God to work some miracle when they found themselves trapped between the Pharaoh's armies and the sea in front of them. But many of us might not know about the icebreaker aspect of it. <laughs> that is, in fact, the Red Sea would not part when the Israelites were standing there and Moses raised his arms or whatever until the Israelites showed enough faith to go and march and step into the sea. And finally, a man named Nashim of Judas, somebody told me it's in the parking lot just now, and when, and when we were at the church, Nashim of Judah courageously stepped out and was bold enough to demonstrate his faith that the, something was, that the sea, something was good, that they had to go to the sea. He was the being, by being the first one to jump into the raging sea. And it was then, and only then, that the sea responded to his act of faith by separating and thus allowing the Israelites to cross on, on dry land. Now, consider, what were your own icebreakers in your life, if you look at it from a broad perspective, and consider what it took to go for that man to march into the sea, it took faith, courage, perseverance, passion, and maybe less obvious teamwork, maybe somebody pushed them in, or trust and friendship. And I remember, this is, I remember the suspense around my first date. Do I look all right? Will she like me? That was an icebreaker. I mean, we won't go any further on that. Now, years later, with faith, passion, and perseverance, my wife Susan and I have three sons, two in college and one going next fall. And while reading through this uh, Toastmasters manual, the Competent uh, Communication Manual, I thought I would start um, ahead by getting getting comfortable with the use of visual aids, which I did bring. Um, and Neil has brought a handout. So, I, so, so the visual aid that I thought I would be comfortable with is a handout. And this handout is my family album, so because this is the icebreaker speech. And um, so, so I won't talk about my family other than there's some pictures of my family in that album. Now, um, another icebreaker in my life was my trepidation upon giving Novocaine to a patient for the fir very first time when I was a dental student. I mean, that was like being here tonight. That was a professional icebreaker. My practice has since flourished and was featured in, on the cover of the Doctor of Dentistry magazine, which is a local magazine, that, and that you can read the story. Oh, Neil, how what good time. 
<laughs> you can read the story about our practice in the reprint that from this article that's also being handed out. I got the okay. four. Are you sure you got those those cards right? All right, this might run over because I'm I'm, I'm a rookie, so okay. So um, to this day, I continue to experience life icebreakers in the realm of spirituality, intellectually, physically, so much so that I have even considered writing a book uh, called My Midlife Makeover. This, this is, um, okay. It gets better. Um, I remember just about two years ago, during the 4th of July week, 2000, in the summer of 2007, I started a boot camp program at the Marblehead YMCA, which met in the morning at 5.45. You might as well just put that down, because I'm not even halfway done. What am I going to do? I'm not just going to keep going. Because, maybe, I mean, what am I going to do? I just kept to the yellow already. But anyway, so, okay, I'll go faster. Neil did this in six minutes, so he read it last night. But in any case, I met with this boot camp program meets at 5.45 a.m., three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. There were about 20 members, mostly 10 years younger than me, and two trainers. The very first day, we were instructed to run over a mile. And this is outdoors, right? From the old Y in Marblehead, if anybody knows where that is, it must be from the bank, that uh, the National Grand Bank, to the beach and then the causeway. Well, I got to the, 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 uh, the pizza place, and, I, and then I got to maybe the Marblehead Savings Bank, which was a couple of blocks, and I was like, I couldn't believe it, and I saw the back of their heads, and for me at that time, I could hardly make it more than a block or two. And so I went to Starbucks and waited for them to come back. But, and the trainers thought, this guy is never going to make it through the summer. However, but I stuck with it, and I did more each time, and I'm still in the program, this is like a year and a half later, and like this morning, we ran three miles, and I was right in there with the pack. Now, most importantly, though, that, that account of, of boot camp, which is, was an icebreaker in a sense, is how all of this relates to Toastmasters, which can be best expressed by a motto I once read in a fitness store saying, this is the fitness store over there by the gym, by uh, Silver Street, you know, that fitness. Okay. It's amazing how something you do with only 3% of your time being fitness can have such a profound effect, effect on the other 97% of your time in life. In a similar manner, I can see how my partaking in the activity of this Toastmaster, this is why I'm kind of enthusiastic about this, in the activity of Toastmasters, just a few hours a month, although we did spend a lot of time writing this speech, um, will have a pervasive effect upon my whole life, my family, and community, and people around me. Someday, too, I will remember this Toast I will look back on this Toastmasters speech, perhaps upon completion of this workbook, and look back at this icebreaker. And having looked ahead at the workbook, over the last couple of days since I've been a guest here, I've begun to formulate some of my speeches. And for example, research your topic. I would love to prepare a speech and get up here and share about some worthy book that I've read, because I'm not in a book club, but I started listening to audio books in my car and I've read about 20 books last year. Say, for example, Nancy Salmon's book about parenting, when loving your child is not enough or Malcolm Gladwell's book about the outliers, why some people are wildly successful, or The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Poland about what to eat and what's in the food, or